Hello everybody. My name is Tracy and I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ and I came to celebrate recovery with addictions to methamphetamine, alcohol, and being a sexual abuser. I'm still working on some pride issues in my life. How are you doing? You know, in Celebrate Recovery, we do many things repetitive over and over again. It, uh, at the beginning of every meeting, we will read the eight principles along with the Beatitudes. We'll read the 12 steps along with the uh, scriptural definition of them. And we do it over and over again because we are human beings and we're prone to fall into uh, cycles and habits in our lives. Obviously, or else there wouldn't be a celebrate recovery to work on the hurts, habits, and hang-ups in our life. We all have uh, habits in our lives. Getting up in the morning, having that cup of coffee, brushing our teeth, uh, routines that we do in a day, but they are habits. They're instinctive in our lives. In fact, if we miss one of those things, our day could be off kilter. The same thing is with Celebrate Recovery. We repeat things over and over again to put them deep down into our heart, into our spirit, into our very being. Because this world is built as such that it's going to fall apart. It doesn't belong to us. We're travelers. Those who believe in Jesus Christ are sojourners passing through this country that is not ours, waiting to get home. So this world that is full of sin and falling apart, it has the trappings of it. And because we're human and we're still in sinful flesh here on earth, we are tempted in all ways. And it's, it's be, it'd be wrongful for anyone to think that they're not tempted because Jesus himself was tempted. And if our Lord and Savior can be tempted, then we certainly can be also. The one thing that Jesus did when he was tempted in the wilderness, Satan came to him after he was hungry and he was tired. He had been fasting for 40 days. And then Satan comes up with all these great things for him to do. Jesus' only response to Satan was, it is written. And he'd repeat the word to him. How did Jesus do it? Okay, well, he was God, so he, had the, he was the living word, right? That's what the, the Bible says. Christ is the word of God. So he already knew it. He had that advantage over us. But we have an entire Bible. So we have a great advantage also. If we apply this into our hearts, we can defeat temptation when it comes to us by repeating the word. Well, how do we do that? We do it by reading the Word, taking a small part of it and memorizing the Word, reading it over and over. Oftentimes, there's so many beautiful uh, Christian songs out there from the old hymns to new contemporary music that uses Scripture. And I don't know about you, but I remember things in song form far more easy. Like, I got the theme song for Gilligan's Island in my head. Still. And that was a terrible show. Okay, I laughed when I was a kid. But that song is still in my head because music is memorable for me. So whatever it takes for you to memorize the Word of God, it's a valuable tool. Because we don't fight the evil powers of this world with our own might and strength. Because it doesn't come at us in might and strength. It comes at us in thoughts and provocations of our hearts, right? We need the Word of God to defend ourselves. The Bible says that the Word of God is the sword. It's the sword of the Spirit, and that's what we use to defend ourselves against the temptations that will come. When I first started, when I first became a Christian, and I went to my first Bible study, it was held by a little man, and I believe his name was Ed. This was a long time ago. And Ed had a very unique way of beginning his Bible studies. And he'd begin it with this mantra. He would hold up his Bible and he would say, this is my Bible. This is the living word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can be who it says I can be. I am a child of God. I am loved. I am saved and I am forgiven. This is my Bible, and I will never, ever, 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 ever doubt it. He said he would never, ever, ever, 
many, many times. It was, it was kind of humorous, and it was interesting to me. I was just seeking the Word of God. I was very hungry for it. And this guy had this little mantra that he'd put up. Now, like I said, I only sat in his Bible study about six times, but I remembered that. It stuck in me. And the truths of that were incredible. Because he didn't just hold up his Bible and say this. He had all of us hold up our Bibles and repeat after him. So in the just the six times that I sat with this man, that's what he said, and it stuck with me. It was a repetition process over and over that placed into my heart this truth, that this is the living word of God, and it is written for me, and it's written for you too, that I am loved that I am saved, that I am forgiven, that I am his child, that I am what it says I am. I'm not what this says I am, and I'm not what the world says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can walk in a holy light. I can be well, and I can have peace in this world. It's an incredible thing to find something that you can repeat over and over and get it deep into your spirit and your soul, not the Gilligan's Island theme but the Word of God, memorizing it. So, if you have your Bible, would you just take a few seconds and hold your Bible up? If you have the Bible app on your phone, that's fine too. And if you're holding your phone while you're watching this, that's fine, you already have it in your hand. But just repeat after me, and and please, just do it. If you're embarrassed or something, then go sit in a room, but if you're not embarrassed to proudly proclaim the thing that God has done for you through his word, then repeat after me and say it out loud. This is my Bible. It's the living word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can be what it says I can be. I am a child of God. I am loved, I am saved, I am forgiven, and I will never, ever, 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 ever doubt the Word of God. God loves you, and He wrote this magnificent letter for you. At Celebrate Recovery, we incorporate so much scripture into the lessons and the studies of Celebrate Recovery, in the participant guides, because the Word of God is the thing that we will use to defeat the hurts, hang-ups, and habits in our lives. The Word of God is the thing that gets us through this world that we don't belong in anymore. It holds us to the truth of who God is and how deeply loved we are by Him writing that Word. Hold the Word in your heart. Lock on to it and don't let go. It will be your defense at any point in time when you need it. It'll be your comfort when you need it, and it'll be your guide when you need it. But it's no good if it's just sitting on a shelf and you don't have it in your mind or in your heart. Memorize scripture. Repeat things over and over. And when you're at Celebrate Recovery and here's the 12 steps or the eight principles again, Try not to roll your eyes, but close your eyes maybe and see if you can remember what is coming up next. Blessed are the pure in heart, for theirs will be the kingdom of God. We're pure in heart because we're seeking the truth in Jesus Christ. My name is Tracy. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus, and I hope that the word saturates your heart and stays with you. That when temptation comes, and it will, that you'll be able to fight against it. Because remember, God wrote you a love letter. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can be who it says I can be. I can do what it says I can do. I am a child of God. I am loved. I am saved. I'm forgiven. This is my Bible. And I'll never, ever, 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 ever 
I'll never ever doubt the Word of God. And I hope you don't either. My name is Tracy. I love you and God loves you. And there's nothing you can ever, 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 ever do about that. God bless you.